there's over 300 to choose from. Charlie Sheen listed 20 of more than 300. So what I'd like to do is examine just a few of these, and we're going to take the simplest ones. What is the probability of the BBC or Reuters accurately predicting an unknown event in advance? 100,000. Now, you could say a million to one, but 100,000 to one is generous for this particular report from Jane Stanley at the BBC. Let's take another one, the cell phones. We have questions, Mr. President. Lots of questions. Charlie Sheen's question number 18 to the President. What's the chances of a mobile phone working from high altitude in 2001? Well, the technical information is linked at the side. One in a hundred, and that's very fair. I think so. Three. The Comical Commission. 60% of those appointed to investigate 9-11 went public about fraud preventing their inquiries. How many investigations have led a majority of its members to cry fraud? Well, I'm not aware of many, but that's probably not so hard to organise, so I'm going to say the probability is less than one in a thousand, and I think I'm being generous, okay? Number four. Everybody knows this as the smoking gun, if nothing else, and that's Building 7. The architects and engineers are saying close to zero chance, but for our purposes we're going to be extremely generous and say one in a hundred thousand that fire alone caused this precise collapse. Five of eight. There's another one that's puzzling to me and that's the pantomime passport. How many paper passports have survived a head-on plane crash at 500 miles per hour? If I say less than one in 10,000 I think I'm being generous. Let's take another one here, the missing F-16s. How many times have the US Air Force made no defence to a hijacked plane? Well, there probably have been some, not many in the last 40 years, but if I say of all the incidents, less than one in a thousand, I think I'm being generous. Are you with me so far? Seven. Snoring NORAD. How many incompetent decisions did Vice President Tricky Dick Cheney make over eight years? We're going to be gracious and say he made less than one in a thousand bad decisions. Last one, eight of eight, the banned bombs, censored from the 9-11 Commission report. What are the chances of hundreds of eyewitnesses all lying about multiple explosions? If I say less than one in a thousand, I'm being generous. Okay, so I've given you eight questions we've selected here. The bogus BBC, magic cell phones, comical commission, Bottomless Building 7, the Pantomime Passport, Missing F-16s, Snoring NORAD, and the Banned Bombs. Now the question is, okay, we've got a priori probabilities estimated for each one of these eight contentions, so what's the probability of these combined? After multiplying them out, we get 10 with 28 zeros after it, but to keep the statisticians happy, I've got to divide that by any composite probabilities, if any. I'm going to more than cover that angle and assume it's less than 100 billion, or 10 to the 11th. So that gives me 10 to the 17th. 10 to the 28th divided by 10 to the 11th gives me 10 to the 17th. That's still a very big number. Now if I was teaching a class in statistics and I want to get across to you, say, what is one chance in 100? One way I could do that is I could take a large bucket, I put 100 silver dollars in it and I mark one of them red. I shake the bucket up, my chances of picking the marked one if I reach in blindfolded is one in a hundred. Simple. Well, now I'll need a bucket that will hold 10 to the 17th silver dollars to get that across. Where do I get a bucket of 10 to the 17th silver dollars? I measured the volume and then I took the country of Afghanistan, the first to be invaded after 9-11, roughly the same size as the state of Texas, and if you fill it with silver dollars, when it gets two feet deep, I've got about 10 to the 17th silver dollars. Well, I only took eight questions out of 300. I've got 300 to choose from. Let me take another eight from Charlie Sheen's list, but to save time, I won't go through an analysis. I'm going to stipulate that the next eight are no less likely than the first eight. The next eight will be more precise, more rare, but let's ignore that. Let's assume that the next eight are no less likely than the ones I've analyzed. I've got over 300 to choose from. The next date would be more specific, assuming no decrease in likelihood. I have 10 to the 28th times 10 to the 28th. That gives me 
10 to the 56th, again I've got to divide by 10 to the 11th, so now I have uh, 10 to the 45th. How big of a bucket do we need now? Well, the speed of light travels at 186,000 miles per second. And it turns out that I need a ball of tightly packed silver dollars that would take light four hours to cross the diameter. And that would give me 10 to the 45th silver dollars. I'm just trying to get across how absurdly huge these probabilities have come so far. I'm going to do this one more time. This time I won't double it, I'll triple it. I'm going from 16 to 48. Again, I have 300 to choose from. And assuming no decrease in likelihoods, I have 10 to the 28th six times. Uh, that's 10 to the 168th. 168th, I've got to divide that by 10 to the 11th, so that now gives me 10 to the 157th. To try and demonstrate the probability of 10 to the 157th, silver dollars won't work, they're too big. And he is a pinhead. <laughs> I did think about using pinheads to demonstrate this, but as it turns out, even pinheads are way too big. And try telling that to Bill O'Reilly. Pinhead. No, Bill, I've just told you, pinheads are way too big. We need something more along the lines of your head size. We need the smallest thing that you can imagine, an atom. We're going to make a ball of atoms. OK, I need to get to 10 to the 157th. How am I going to do this? Well, if I make a ball of atoms involving every atom in our galaxy, that's 10 to the 66th. We are still well short. <laughs> I need to make a ball of atoms for every atom in the universe, that's 10 to the 66th times 10 to the 66th. Got, that now gives me 10 to the 132nd. I'm still a long way from 10 to the 157th. I'm going to repeat this whole exercise every second since the universe began, assuming a 16 billion year lifetime. And now I'm only at 10 to the 149th. I am still a long way to go. I am still short by 100 million times. Now obviously in running out this exercise I've gotten beyond our threshold of conceptual reach here. But I want to point out that I've only dealt with a probability of 48 of over 300 compromising questions about 9-11. I am more convinced that 9-11 needs to be reinvestigated. I'm more confident of that fact than I am of my own existence. Incidentally, I've skipped some of the most amazing of them. Sybil Edmonds, fired from the FBI, gagged by the DOJ. The black boxes found by the firefighters, confiscated by the FBI. Mayor Giuliani's statement about the World Trade Center and denial of his own words. The mysterious white plane in restricted airspace. NORAD simulating hijacked airliners. This is just a sampling from more than 300. There's just no way with intellectual integrity you can attribute this to random chance. Mr. President, it's time for a new investigation. It's time for the truth. And at the very least, it's time to meet Charlie Sheen. Charlie Sheen, you rock.